from Jamie, that's Dave, that's Heath. We're looking at the sits for week number five. It's unfortunate that we have to talk about these guys in the negative light, but they've been disappointing us or have the chance to disappoint us in week number five. Dave, you're up first. Let's take a look at the sits and the players that you're looking to avoid for this week. You got James Conner, J.K. Dobbins, Deontay Johnson, Juju Smith-Schuster, and David Njoku. Let's start with J.K. Dobbins because we differ on this one. I think Dobbins is going to have a good game. You think he's going to have a bad game? Tell me why. Well, he doesn't look like his old self, and he's especially struggling to accelerate when there's open space. I saw it last week. I think he's quick in his cuts. I just don't think he has that second gear. Only three of his 20 carries went six or more yards, none longer than 16 yards. 13 of his runs so far this year have gone for three or fewer yards, and the Bengals rank top six in yards per rush, rushing first down, rush yards after contact per carry, and 10-yard rushes allowed. They're top three in missed tackles. They are a good defense. I am nervous that J.K. Dobbins is a touchdown or bust running back. It should be a high-scoring game. Maybe he scores one, but he needed to score two last week to have a good fantasy game. I don't think he does that again this week. You're very true. He's probably going to need to score to have a big game. But the one thing I agree with you on, he's not the old J.K. Dobbins because they're using him in the passing game. That was fantastic last week to see him get four catches. Only second time in his career, he's gotten four catches. No D.J. Reader on the other side for the Bengals. I like the fact that this is expected to be a high-scoring game. So I think J.K. Dobbins does score, and I think he's just starting to get going. So get ahead of it and start him this week against the Bengals. The other sits for you include T Connor and Deontay Johnson. Let's talk about Connor in his matchup uh, this week against the Eagles. Could be very, very ugly for him. The last three games for Philadelphia, they have been amazing against opposing running backs. 3.4 yards per carry, a rush touchdown every 40 carries. They've been awesome. And Connor looks sluggish. He definitely doesn't have that type of burst that we saw from him earlier in his career or even last year. And if he's not scoring touchdowns, which we saw last year, he really doesn't give you very much. I don't think he scores. I think Philadelphia runs away in this one. And in the second half, it's going to be Kyler Murray playing hero ball. James Conner would be lucky to get four catches in the game and do something with that. He's I, still, I'm out on Conner this Still week. a top 24 running back for you, though. It's it's hard. I don't want him to be there, but I do think that he's probably <laughs> yeah. going to get I think he's probably going to get 18. Be there, then he's probably there. going to get 18 touches and there's not very many running backs that I feel like are going to get that much volume. So I do like his touchdown odds and he's going to catch three or four passes. I don't really like him this week. <laughs> okay, so don't like him but still have him ranked as a starter and then Deontay Johnson uh, yeah, another there, there, one. It, it's a wild card this week because we don't know exactly what Kenny Pickett is going to do for his receivers, but it's a brutal matchup. They're two touchdown favorites. First down, first time since the merger that the Steelers have been two touchdown favorites in any game. Dog, last underdogs. Time, uh, underdogs, excuse me. Last time that, that they were close to this was the Super Bowl where Neil O'Donnell threw the two interceptions. So uh, what does the situation bowl, hold for Deontay Johnson? And do you like any of the Steelers receivers? I really don't like any of the Steelers receivers. I even like, I kind of had to fight myself to keep Pat Fryermuth in my top 12 at tight end, but that's because tight end is just so bad. But I just don't like the outlook with the rookie making his first start at Buffalo, and this is the number one defense in the NFL. I could give you a ton of stats on it. You can read about it on the site. But his target share, this is the one other thing that really bothered me. Deontay Johnson's target share was 16.7% with Kenny Pickett in the second half. I think Pickett's got chemistry with George Pickens. Not that I think Pickens is going to have a good game, but those two are closer together in my rankings than they've ever been this season, and they're both outside of my number three receiver range. I, I just have a hard time when we got a like, guy like Deontay Johnson, who's basically been 10 targets a game for each of the past two seasons, and one half of football he didn't had a 16% target share. I don't know that we should react to that too much. I, I've dropped him just a little bit. I mean, he's normally a top 15 wide receiver for me. I'm still expecting he's going to be the clear leader in targets this week. If he's not, then I'll adjust. Understandably so, and I think a lot of people still hope to roster him. It's it's an easier way. It's easier to get away from him in half and non PPR because he hasn't scored a touchdown yet this season. But again, this could be an ugly game for the Steelers' offense taking on what is one of the better defenses in Buffalo. Heath, you have DJ Moore on your sit list, and our producer James Lamberts has this decision to make with his fantasy lineup. So you got Justin Jefferson as a locked-in guy, but if you got to pick the second receiver, is DJ Moore or Deontay Johnson? I probably lean toward Deontay Johnson. I guess we probably all do. But, Heath, is this the week for DJ Moore to bounce back, or is this going to be another week where he disappoints us in a tough matchup against the 49ers? Yeah, I do not think this is the week that he bounces back. This 49ers defense is the best in the NFL. This Panthers offensive philosophy is the worst in the NFL. I don't know if they're – like, luckily they're playing in Carolina, so you don't have to worry if they let the coaches get back on the plane to go home or not. But this is an awful, awful situation for this offense. The bad thing was it said pick three. He might need to start two of our sets. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, think, <laughs> I think Dobbs starts ahead of those two. Deontay Johnson and DJ Moore. I would go Justin Jefferson, Deontay Johnson, and Dobbs. I would Me too. Yeah. That would be my own. Yep, yep. Easy well, Dobbs and then Johnson, but the same thing when you're starting to line up.
Yep. All right. So you got more on your sit list. We got through that against the 49ers. Good luck there. Uh, you're setting both Cowboys running back. So both Ezekiel Elliott and Tony Pollard should be on the bench for you. There have been two times this year, I believe, where Tony Pollard has more carries than yards. And then you've got Ezekiel Elliott, who has one game over 53 rushing yards and has had only one game where he did anything in the passing game. Now they're facing a Rams defense that's giving up 14.9 points per game to all running backs. We'll chop that in half. They can both have seven and a half. I don't want to start either one of them. It took one big run from Jeff Wilson to save his day last week. And granted, that's a much better rushing offense right now than the Cowboys are just having the offensive line and the system for the 49ers. So yes, it's easy to get away from Zeke and Pollard really should not be started until we start to see more consistent production in tandem with Zeke or until there's an unfortunate time where Zeke may miss some time. And Antonio Gibson is another guy that you want to avoid this week in that matchup against the Titans. And I think people might see if Brian Robinson's not active that, oh, well, we get one more week of Antonio Gibson. I'm just not sure that we do. They can't run the ball. They can't generate any space. And now he's losing out on all, almost all the passing opportunities to J.D. McKissick. There's just no value for Antonio Gibson right now. I agree with you. Uh, this is a game that they could win. So I guess the one thing that you could say, maybe he finds the end zone because that's kind of been the mantra when they've been in competitive games. He's, he's got a chance to score. Uh, so we'll see what happens there at home. So yes, keep an eye on Brian Robinson's status, but uh, if they are trailing, expect to see a lot of J.D. McKissick. Sits for me, Dave and Heath took all the fun ones, so I get the leftover stuff. I'm gonna sit Jared Goff, who's been a top 12 quarterback. Just don't expect him to have a good game on the road against New England, especially without a Monroe St. Brown, most likely, and DJ Chark as well. You picked up Tyler Algier, that is the right move to make. Do not start Tyler Algier. Keep him on your bench to see what happens. The Bucks, I know, did not stop the run last week against Kansas City. This is a different scenario. So as well as the Falcons running ball, stay away from him. Now, Dave, you said Pat Fryer moved to somebody that you have a hard time getting outside your top 12. I have a hard time doing it as well, but I also have a hard time saying he's going to be good against the Bills because they just eliminated Mark Andrews last week, and they have That's been true. traditionally under Sean McDermott, under Leslie Fresher, Frazier, their defense coordinator, fantastic against tight ends. It's just not a position that has success, especially when Jordan Poyer is on the field, Matt Milano is on the field. Uh, it'd be different if they had Micah Hyde as well. It'd be even tougher. So Pat Fryer was not in a good spot, and again, in a game where they could lose by two touchdowns. So they're the guys I would like to avoid 